Is all love the same? And then I'm looking at love and marriage. Is all love the same? Love and marriage. As always, we want to go through the review points, right? The world is under the false assumption that what? Love now see that? Just stop right there. They say everybody says love wins. It, 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 that's what people are saying. And it sounds so right. It sounds so good. It sounds like, how can you come against such a statement? But as we know, there are different types of love. And so therefore, we have to be clear. The church has to be clear. Right? I'm, I'm not saying the world's going to be clear. They're, they're not. They're going to be cloudy. They're going to be shades of gray. The world is going to seek that their way of thinking is accepted. Now, <laughs> I know the scripture not to say that to understand that it says that we are in the world, but not of the world. And so therefore, how can what we believe and the world believes be equal or the same? So that's, that's what they're telling us, love wins. We understand what? Look at the next statement. What are we saying? Only God's agape love wins. And, and just to reiterate something here, that if we are operating in God's agape love, it covers all the other loves. All right? Whether you're dealing with eros, philos, or storge, it, it's covered. God is the completeness of love. All right. Now, we understand the devil has mutated love, and it's getting worse and worse. The mutation is getting worse and worse. You know, as a scientist, as a biologist, I see this so clearly that if you put together two faulty people who have, for, for ease of conversation, who have genetic deficiencies, that child is a high possibility of that child having those same genetic deficiencies and more. Then if you put together those type of children, it just gets worse and worse. And that's what sin does to the life of humanity, the lives of humanity. So the devil has mutated love. The goal for God is that we love holy. Not this partial love thing. We want to love totally holy so that we, we are whole. And with that in mind, I go into tonight's teaching. Part 11 is all love the same, love and marriage. Love and marriage, okay. One of the most put out there statements for the agenda of those who are against God is this. Love is love. As soon as you hear, Shekinah, I am telling you, I am your teacher. I ain't playing with it. As soon as you hear, love is love, you ought to mark that person. Because right away, you know, all love is not the same. You know, I love hash cakes, but I ain't going to marry hash cake. Love is not the same. As soon as she says something like that, they understand it. Now, then their next favorite phrase appears to be love wins. Right? Love is love and love wins. It sounds so wonderful. Let me say this. Let me say this. Both statements are nice. They are positive. They are feel-good statements. And without further investigation, you would readily accept the statements as being accurate and the truth. What you must understand, hear me, is that the enemy of the kingdom cannot come at you with negativity. Oh, Lord. If, if I come to you grumpy, cut my eyes, you know, turning my head, 
You can know right away, oh, that person got a problem with me. Hey, something wrong with them. So the enemy never comes with that ease. That's like, that's easy. They come sweet. The enemy comes sweet, passive, almost submissive, saying, oh, yeah, God said it. It's true. Isn't that the way he does it? It's over. His pattern hasn't changed. And so, no, he, he will seek to gain your trust by beguiling words that entice you to move from your previous stance to take up another position. He has to move you away from understanding that it is God's love that is the total love. And you know what? I have an issue with all, anybody who just says, well, we can just lower the standard. I have never seen in church, in school, at a job where uh, you can let it go, just let it go. Like, I, I never forget about well, maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I'm not sure of the timeline, when jobs started letting people dress down. Now, nah? oh Lord, we've gone to another level. Because anytime you say, ah, uniformity is not necessary, you know, standard or whatnot, then you just give people an inch, what they're going to take? Uh-huh. And you know it, you know it, and I know it. They take a mile. Yeah. Those that used to have nice pants suits and slack suits. But anyway, let me continue here because that could go on somewhere. And so, again, it's about, here, here it is, and this is why we've got to fight the good fight of faith, because it's always about moving you from your place, your stance. This is what he has always done. Let's take a look. Genesis 3 and 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Talk about standards being dropped. Talk about covering. Talking about marriage. Watch it. The term or the word beguile comes from the word nasha, which means deceive greatly, utterly. So you think the devil is sweet, but he's really out to deceive you utterly. You got so many single women who are single mothers who were greatly deceived by, by beguiling words. He said he loved me. Yeah, that's that love we and stuff. That's that love is love. Now, the idea with this beguiling deception, the idea here is that the serpent totally had her attention and affection. I don't know. You, you show me a woman. It's got to be a rarity indeed. Whose husband is not showing her attention and she does not appreciate. I'd say she's going to fall in love with the person. Let's just go over it. She does not appreciate. Somebody's paying attention to me. Now, the woman that's got a, a, a head on her shoulder going to go to her husband and say, well, so I said, I look nice. What'd you say? That's what I've done. <laughs> Rather than getting caught. Uh, listen, see, a lot of people don't like my, haven't I done that, husband? Oh. <laughs> because you are not beguiling me. You're not going to beguile me. I understand what you're saying, I accept what you're saying, but I know who is my covering. See, but not all women are like that. You know, let's go out drink. Let's just have a conversation. I just want to keep you company. Seems like you're a little lonely. Uh, that's, that's all the beguiling. So what we must understand is that it is at that very instant that Eve, this is big, was unfaithful. See that? See that? She didn't have sex with the serpent. She didn't have any type of intercourse, but she cheated. She was unfaithful. She gave ear to another authority to cover her at that moment. See, see, because you got to get the picture, right? We're in, we're in the first garden with the first couple, with the first marriage. And here you have the first cheating. See, some people think cheating is a physical thing. Oh, no, no, no. All you got to do is get your head wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Her faith and trust had turned from God to the serpent. Her faith and trust had been removed from her uncovering Adam to the serpent's way of thinking. Even though they were never sexually intimate, they became intimately connected in their minds or thought process. That's the strongest thing right there. People wonder how people be drinking Kool-Aid, committing suicide, Jim Jones and all that. Because they were intimate with him. They trusted him outside of, and, and what did he do? He locked them in a, in a, in a uh, like a camp, a concentration, compound, concentration camp. Think about that word, concentration. I want to concentrate you on me as an individual with only these thoughts and nothing else can intrude so I can capture your mind. That's why we've got to be careful also when it's just us four and no more. No, 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 no. What is God saying? God's got to be in that. All right? So note <laughs> that once Eve consented to sin with the serpent, her next move was to offer what she trusted to an unaware Adam. He break down. Sin has to conceive. So now the illegal relationship has to be brought into the legal union. Uh, Let's go some more because we've got a ways to go. 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 3, it reads, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Oh, Lord, that, that is so delicious. Listen, the gospel message is simple, you know. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But people have complicated it. And let's, re let's also always remember, which I'm going to get into, that we are the bride of Christ. So we are speaking in terms of a marriage. So the very thing that I'm going to be dealing with tonight is how the devil has to enter into the church, corrupt the church, because he's got to break the marriage apart. He has to cause all the Christians to start cheating. So when you can make What's a cheat? This ain't in my notes, but I just felt it. When, when you can make a Motown show and be dancing and playing for four hours, but you get tired after one hour in church, you're a cheater. When you're all dressed up and excited and got your done, done to the do's, done. And you're going, oh, I've never seen so many people here at this show. But the same people will get and go into a church the next day, the next day, you're a cheater, you adulterer, you. See that? that? That's the gospel message. He said he's coming what? To a chaste one? That means only espouse to them, concern mostly about my relationship with Jesus Christ? This thing is serious. And I will say it, I even I told Bishop, I even was told to Bishop McCall, I said, Bishop, the one of these that's got me is the fact that only one out of seven churches is acceptable to God. If you're not Philadelphia, forget it. We got so many lukewarm, second love Christian, more excited about the, what? Your marriage has been corrupted. You are no longer chaste. And Shekinah, we have to be careful that we don't fall into this. When you're, when you're not excited about church, you're cheating. I don't know who you're cheating with. I have no idea. But when we gather together, it's in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He died for us. We have eternal life. We're trying to win others in. So we've got to be first partakers and understanders of what I'm talking about. So we've got to keep ourselves in check. Now, church, I want you to note in both instances, in the Old Testament text that I read in Genesis and the New Testament text I just read, marriage is attacked. Okay? <laughs> Before anything else was established, 
The first institution was the institution of marriage. Huh? I want to make a big statement here. It's, it's vital. It's a vital statement that many do not want you to understand. Here it is. There is a love that will absolutely separate you from God. What? Did I say that? Yes, I did. There is a love that will absolutely separate you from God. I love my music. I love my singing. I love, I love my read. I love my smoking. Hey, I, I love all that. That's a love. See, I just said love. So again, we are understanding as a church, it's not love is love. They're liars. It's not love wins. What type of love are you talking? What type of love are you talking about? We've got to be sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that some would have you to think that God is love and love is love. I'm here to tell you that yes, God is love, and God will not accept just any form of love that you place before Him. God recognizes who He is. <laughs> if you love God. I mean, you really love God. I mean, you, you get excited. I can be tired, and then when I come into God's house, I'm like, I love God. You know, I can feel, feel like I, I dress down a lot, so I'm good and comfortable. So when I know I've got like a half an hour to get ready, I'm like, <laughs> I'm so comfortable in my clothes. And I kind of complain to myself, and it's funny because my middle daughter did the same thing this, this evening, it was funny. You know, like, I'm comfortable. I've got to get, why can't we just? But once I get the clothes on, it's finished. I'm done. I'm ready. And I'm excited. And we're going to always be challenged as to our love relationship. What drives us to come into God's house, his presence, and to be presentable to him as a bride? Mm. Well, how are you dressed going to bed? These days, don't need to say anything. <laughs> So God recognizes who he is. He knows if you love him by the agape love. We can't even feel him. We can't even feel him. Say, I'm here and I, I'm clapping my hands in it. I'm singing. No, 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 no. Oh, there's the outward signs. His little zzz, he's going right in the heart. Yeah. He's saying, let me see what's happening with your heart. There you go. Right there, right there. <laughs> so let's follow. Let's follow. Adam is lonely, I'm going back to the beginning, and unfulfilled, and so God brings a woman to Adam to be his bride. See that? He's unfulfilled. God who creates everything, he could have had options. I said, the newlywed game, remember back in the day? Right? You got the three, <laughs> and they're answering the questions, and she, she, let's say she gets to choose who she's going to, Go out on a date with, right? Will it be? Will it be? What was he called? De dating game? Oh, dating game. What was he called? Bachelor. Will it be bachelor number one? Will it be bachelor number two? Will it be bachelor number three? And she gets to choose. God is so God, he could have brought three bachelors to Eve. Matter of fact, let's go there. He could have brought a bachelor out to Eve. So, so understand now, let's get back here, students. <laughs> God, who is the creator of all, don't you ever fool yourself. He knows what he wanted to present in the earth. He could have easily have said, you know what? Let me present. Adam with some choices and brought three Eves. Could have done that. Could have said, you know what? Let's see what kind of instinct he has. Let's, let's do a police lineup, you know. <laughs> and let's, let's put three Eves and chuck in their equal balance, three, three joints. God would not even give humanity an option because he knew that way down in 2010, 11, 12, and 13, there's rebellious humans who want to think that they're gods. They're going to come up with these options themselves. And I'm going to need a set aside people to understand that that's not what I instituted. That only marriage between a man and a woman is what 
was instituted. That's the base. That's the foundation. That's what we have to model our lives after. That, that's where the vows are taking place. Right? I'll talk about it some more in this beautiful image there. So, Adam is satisfied. How about that? A woman satisfied Adam. The woman satisfied him. God knew, of course God did, what would satisfy Adam. God is not even giving you options. It's like, this is totally going to fulfill you. And the beautiful thing, not is it only going to, um, not only going to totally fulfill you, but it's going to reproduce you. I'll get into that in a minute. I'm coming down that street. Just hold your, hold your, just hold your horses. So the first couple immediately became the picture and representation of God's love. That is what we have to see. He was missing something. God knew it. God provided it. God, when he provides what's missing, he don't need anybody else's provision. He just provided God was pleased and God communed with them. God is pleased with this and he starts communing. Watch this. Let me read um, Genesis 3, 8, and this is NIV. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, at this point, this couple, the couple, they did something they had not done before. They hid from God. They hid from God. They were now, watch this, just follow it, it's beautiful. They were now not on speaking terms with God. <laughs> Jesus. Can, can I just say something right here? Do you know how many people would not, are, are not, I don't even would, are not in speaking terms with me because of my stance with, of marriage? You can get along too well with Pastor Maria Seaman and support anything outside of what God instituted. I'm going to have a problem with you from jump. When God sees something being broken that he instituted, he got a problem with it. So they hid from God. They're not on speaking terms with God. They didn't want to see God, and they did not want God to see them. Most homosexuals ain't trying to come in church and get the Holy Ghost and be Holy Ghost filled and to study this word. They want other, other forms of Bibles where things are taken out and removed. They're trying to, they're trying to divorce. No, I'm not trying. They've divorced God to the, the, the removing. God said you're cursed if you do that. You can't add or take away. You can explain it the way you want, but it better be according to his word. <laughs> Let's understand what occurred as it relates to God's love and the fake love that the devil offers. Formerly, the devil, Satan, or Lucifer, was in relationship with God and was close to God. You always remember that. However, when Lucifer was lifted up in pride, he experienced that fall as God cast him out of his presence. Now, Satan sees his replacement. Every time the devil sees a Holy Ghost-filled saint, he sees his replacement. Every time he looks at a marriage, he looks at what he knows is a relationship between God and the church. I'll say that again because this is, this is what we have to remember. Every time the devil sees a marriage between a man and a woman, he remembers that that's the institution, and, and God loves that institution, and, and God's come and sent his son to come back for, for his bride, and I was kicked out. I'll never be in God's presence like that again. So I'm coming after what God's coming after. God's coming after his bride. Jesus Christ is the groom, and one day, sooner than you know, sooner than you think, he's going to say, go get your bride now. Yeah. Go get those chase people. Get those chase people. Yeah. I'm just thinking of a word. That word chaser is like means without anything, right? What does chaser mean in the drink world? Come on, some of you drank. I didn't. It's a chaser. That's not. 
Uh, see, I know I've got people that know it. Thank you for that information. <laughs> that means a chaser to the world has been diluted, correct? Right. A chaser has been diluted. The church has informed me. The ch a chaser means it has been diluted. I'm going to tell you that the bride of Christ is not a chaser. It's chased. We have not been diluted. We're pure. Right. Hallelujah. And it's spiritually pure, which means it doesn't matter what your physical condition is or has been. You are now chaste. You are not diluted. Matter of fact, you are concentrated. Matter of fact, you are so concentrated that people can't handle you. You are so concentrated that people think that they can't live up to the standard. But guess what? It's not your standard. It's not my standard. It's God's standard. And God will not set a standard that people cannot meet. He would not do that. So Satan, every time he sees a marriage, he sees his replacement. Now, the replacement of Satan is a godly couple in marriage. I want you to think about that. The replacement of Satan, because we're thinking of dealing with love, right? I'm going to get there. The replacement of Satan is a godly couple in marriage. Perhaps this is why, watch this, some experience marriage as a little bit of heaven on earth. You heard of that? Right? So every time, every time Satan sees like a marriage between a man and a woman, it's like that's that little bit of heaven right here on earth. And he comes after it. If they ought to experience just a little bit of heaven because the devil's after the marriage. I have experienced a little bit and a lot of other stuff, but just a little, you know. Because marriages are attacked. I'm going to give my husband credit in a minute. Hold on. <laughs> coming. It's coming. I say again that the replacement, the better image of God is marriage. That's the last day fight, Joel. Satan's last fight is to come against the family, come against marriage. He has to come against the institution that will replicate little beings that should love God. Hmm. All right, all right. Hence, if the devil is going to get revenge on God, keep that in mind, he already knows that he cannot get to God directly. The devil cannot beat up God. The devil was kicked, God booted him out. God said, really? Well, you and all your followers are going. Booted him out, kicked him out. Watch this. Therefore, in order to get at the heart of God, the devil gets to that which mostly aligns with God and who God is. Thus, the devil seeks to steal, kill, and destroy marriage. I'm going to say a statement here. It's not even going to sound right. It, it, it cannot sound right, but I'm going to say it because I heard it. You ought to rejoice when your marriage is destroyed. I did you see that right there, right there, right there. Okay, now let me explain why, because that's just a crazy statement. Here's the point. The devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy that which represents the most godly institution in existence. So I'll say it like this to ease you up. When your marriage is tried and tested, and you're still able to, what? Listen, I ain't going to look at anybody. I ain't even going to hold a mirror to look at myself. When you are in a marriage, and you know it's tried, it's tested, my God, at times you're like, oh, give me the white towel. Let me throw it. When all that? But you yet hold on to God? You yet say, God, hey, God, as long as you've got me? If you've got that type of attitude, you are a chaste virgin. Because you have said, listen, I may not, let me say Maria, let me deal with me. I may not be the best wife, but because you're the best God, I'm going to keep on seeking you in this marriage thing so you can keep it. Now, mind you, you got to have at least one and half of a people who agree. The husband may agree not fully, but even half. Then you got hope. <laughs> I'm not divorced people here. You know what I'm saying is right. Yeah. It's got to be more than one. Somebody, somebody got to believe in that institution in some way. Yeah. But marriages are attacked. I'm going to tell you some more. Let me continue before I say stuff ahead of it, right? I get that. The devil wants to steal kill and destroy marriage. That's the big thing. Everything being for today is about that. 
This election in 2020 is about marriage. I, I don't know how Christians are going to vote. You know, and I woke up this morning, well, semen, okay, semen, all right, semen, so you're going to see. All right. So I woke up, wake up, I was put, put on the news because I just want to keep it a little fresher, right? <laughs> I'm like, the big headline first thing this morning was Pete Buttigieg. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Said that he is now in first place in Iowa. I, I couldn't, I, just like I can't talk now, I'm like, a gay, a homosexual, America? They, they don't believe in knowing God we trust, because the God I serve. That's the Democrats. No wonder it's possible that Trump could win. See that? Now mind you, that's Iowa. They're kind of like a different color than I see. But we're gonna see, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be like um, reality TV. <laughs> it's gonna be reality TV on steroids. <laughs> wow, wow, I said, woo, okay. But it has to happen in the last day. I've told a few people, I think I told our driver. I said, one thing we have to understand, as it was in the beginning, so must it be at the end. And that means that if the devil attacked marriage in the beginning, this has to be the final attack. In the, we're close, you all. Jesus is coming back. So that, that leads me to understand, ooh, I hope I'm not here to experience this. There, there's going to be a homosexual in the White House one day. It was a black man that said homosexual marriages should be endorsed, should be made legal. Oh, so don't act like we got clean hands, sir. Lit up the place and, oh, okay, I'm just saying. I, all I'm saying, if you think I'm talking politics, Bible talking politics. Right. Marriage is going to be attacked. Yeah. That means, in order for marriage to be attacked, hear me, homosexuality has to be on the uprise. And that is what we see. Who would have thought 10 years ago, if I would have said, it's a possibility it's going to be a... Um, Two men sleeping in Lincoln's bed in the White House. In the White House. <laughs> Lincoln's in somersaults right now. You would have said, no, Seaman, no, no. Come on, Seaman, come on. <laughs> How a nobody, a governor, hardly an experience, because it's the seeds and it's the time. Anyway, so let me go back here. What you all like when I give that information is very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> do not think for one second that the attack against God's marriage is some recent plan. See, that's, it's not recent. No, that plan has been since he beguiled Eve. That's what we have to understand. Satan said, listen, he can start and listen, I'm going to say this. Satan's got eternity. <laughs> he, he, he knew, I'll start here. Let me get him kicked out of the presence of God. Let me, the, the, the first church. Church of the Garden of Eden. Church of God. Church of God. That was the voice. Church of God. Church of God. First Church of God. Garden of Eden. <laughs> and we're kicked out of church. All right. So here's my question. What did the beguiling of Eve show? What did that initial beguiling of Eve show? One, Satan hates marriage. Two, Satan hates what God calls marriage. See, now that's two different sentences now. He, he hates marriage, and then he certainly hates a godly marriage. Satan hates godly unions. So, you know, I was naive in 1985 when I got married. I said, he's nice, I'm nice. I forgot this. I weren't savvy, I was 19 years old. What that matter? Is it nice? I'm nice. It's going to be a cakewalk. <laughs> Nobody told me the, get, the cake would have minefields placed at every side. <laughs> He's laughing at me. It's the truth. I'm telling you, it's funny. I mean, I taught him backgammon. Then he beat me, and I had an attitude. I used to get back at him. Didn't I used to get mad at you? How dare you beat me at backgammon? 
What you say? Now, just say it to love. Be careful now. Yeah, I would get ticked off. <laughs> Marriage, I mean, it's, it's kind of easy now because we've been in it so long. But my thought was two good people can be ease. Well, it took me all of two weeks. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> and he was saying the same thing, ain't no doubt. And I, I, I yeah, <laughs> he was saying the same thing. You know, I, I could tell you some stories. I ain't telling you old stories. I'm just telling you these sweet surface little stuff that we can laugh at. But it weren't always, Deacon S. Nancy, it weren't always no la la laughing matter. Because I have this little, sh I am a jealous person, I'll tell you that. I have a streak. Oh. Uh. That's me. I just felt hot right there. Let me just take something to drink. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I got to take a drink on that. I felt hot just right there. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. So I just, you know, my thing is it should be easy. It's not because God, hear me. No, let me say it this way. Because the devil knew that at that altar, Maria and Peter just loved, 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 loved each other. Loved. Ironically, a week ago, and I have been looking for it months back. A week ago, my sister says, calls me, I was away somewhere. Who knows where these days? I was away. <laughs> and she says, Rhea, guess what I found? She said, I was cleaning out one of the rooms at the house. I need to tell my husband. She said, look what I found. I've been looking for it. My wedding, uh, Peter, we got married, it's proof. <laughs> Kent and Maria's wedding. Well, we, we got married. I had to say, I, Maria Antoinette, take you Kent and Eugene. I wasn't even used to calling them. Everybody was like, who's Kent, who's Kent? Everybody, everybody knew him as Peter. But I found this, so we're going to get it cleaned and, and transferred, and one day we're going to have a viewing. <laughs> a viewing. <laughs> I had to, trust me, eventually I had to die in the marriage. I had to die. If I didn't die, the marriage would have died, Joel. I did. I, I'm gonna, I could tell you, but I ain't telling you. That's a marriage seminar. One of these years, we're going to have a marriage seminar. Within the next hmm, five to seven years, should the good Lord tarry, we'll share some stuff with you, help you out. But here's the thing, that God knew we meant what we meant at the altar. So therefore, when these went awry, I didn't find my answer in him, and he didn't find his answer in me. We had to both keep on loving God. And God filled in the gap. <laughs> If not, I could have had a prison ministry. It's all types of stuff that could have been on. So, you know, I'm telling you. And we were, in, I, I mean, I was just innocent, 19. But I discovered marriage will teach you you have a temper. I did not know I had a temper until I got married. See that? See that? Facebook, I've got a temper. <laughs> I figure, I figure now, after 34 years, I figured it out. that God has to remove you out of the marriage so he can be in control of the marriage. That's a statement, you know. Most marriages fail because God has been removed. We'll go into that. I'm going to miss done. But like I said, you guys like when I say that stuff. So. <laughs> Here's the fourth statement I want to say. Watch this. <laughs> Satan is the antithesis of the Holy Spirit. Important, you guys. God said this. I'm like, yes. He is the antithesis of the Holy Spirit. He is a conniving communicator who understands the power of words. Most marriages are destroyed because they no longer communicate understanding. They say things like, they have grown apart. 
We can no longer talk. No, I don't. I used to understand her. I don't understand them anymore. So I mean, God, like, like, wow. You know, how New York doing this. Uh, and yeah, I was like, whoa, that's true. I, that's like, that's true. Because the Holy Spirit is the great communicator. And if the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, is not resting and abiding in that marriage, that means it's the other spirit. Yeah, it's, it's a battle. Marriages have spiritual warfare. And unless you both are in tune, it's just going to be some sort of a struggle. It is. Let me continue reading. Number five, Satan seeks to bring up. Oh, this was delicious. He seeks to bring about a legal separation. He does so by convincing one of them that perhaps they are better at understanding that they think differently. And so they do not have to have the same mind and things, right? But what just different, right? And, and that's okay, right? That's what people do. That is Satan's attack on unity. They are one, and he must get them to become two again. So during a separation, they will have two different residential addresses. They will sleep separately, eat separately. They watch TV separately. They try to raise the children separately. They will go to church separately, go to the movies separately, and do everything else separately. So uh, these legal separations are spiritually illegal. Now let me say this as a fallback statement. Not everything is 100%. Some situations are unique, but this is my belief. I believe that if two people, see everybody said it has to be two minutes. If two people are like, hey, 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 something's going on, and look, we both meant what we meant at the altar. And if we're going through stuff, we have to recognize there's a spiritual warfare go going on here. That's what we need to be communicating ab about. Not, not how the food tastes, not how, how you look in negligee and all that. Matter of fact, all that stuff doesn't matter. You know, don't cover the communication through sex. That's what I hope all of people do. Right? Plenty of people had sex and got divorced. So we can't, that can't be the eros. We've got to understand at the agape level, what is, our, what is the wife, the husband, what is the relationship with God? Because if you both love God enough, he will cause that the division become uni unity again and that you remember what it felt like at the altar. But you've you got to have both remembering. See, that's why divorces happen. Somebody forgets. Somebody loses the Holy Spirit. Some people never start with, okay? What else it says? Um, yeah. So let me look at number six. Satan understands the differences between men and women. <laughs> he knows that it is the woman who is the more sensual, and therefore he usually gets to her. The man usually is focused on work. My husband today, he had to put in a new dryer. You know, he's putting in a new dryer. And he looked to me like a happy camper, like a child on a playground. Like it was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a man. Oh, I can do this. Pastor can talk and preach and all this, but me, man, me, man, oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's sort of what I felt. He didn't say none of that, but that's, that's what I felt, husband. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I, he had taken out the old one, put the new one in. He's taking something. I said, what you doing with that? I'm you're fixing it. No, I'm taking it. I, me, me, man, me take and put one new. You know, I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, I'm getting ready to leave or yeah, getting ready to get dressed to come to church. And he's like, like he's in the, in the, in the, um, in the jungles, like Tarzan fixing the, and it's, Complaining and smiling. He ain't, he ain't mad about nothing. He's smiling. You know, I say, yeah, because that's you. You missed the fix it. You do everything. That's the man thing. Oh. Here I am getting emotional about it. No, he don't know. I conquer. I conquer. You know. <laughs> We're different. What? We're different. We're different. So, so look at this. Look. 
So he knows that the female is more sensual, so he gets to her. The man is usually focused on work. The women are at, at, um, we're at home. The woman at home is focused on family life, meal prep, a lot of stuff, right? All some men need to do is pay someone's wife a little bit of attention, not his wife, right? And this can disrupt her marriage. Satan is the disruptor. So we who are married, even if we feel that um, we're not getting enough attention, we have to be careful because that's the time. I've heard stories. Oh, when my husband and I were going through or whatever, would you believe I saw so-and-so show up? Like the person back from like the, the 1600 shows up. <laughs> like the person way back. You ain't seen them in 24 years. But just because you're having a little struggle with your spouse, they're just, pop, nah, it, you know, they're just popping your view. Now, if you are out of your mind, you're going to go, is the Lord trying to tell me something? <laughs> no, the devil's trying to disrupt your marriage. <laughs> I'm serious. But people, depending on who they are, they take it. They're like, mm-hmm, my season may be up. My new <laughs> your season ain't gone. Because it's for better or worse. <laughs> It used, it used to be we fought for marriages, I'm telling you. You built muscles and you fought for them. <laughs> Number seven, this is my last one here. If you ever give another man or woman an inch in your marriage, Satan can take your marriage down. And because I like to win, ain't nobody, can, nobody, ain't, no. I've had plenty of guys tell me what I look like. I know what I look like. <laughs> You got to tell me, I know. Be soft. Really? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> you got to know. I'm just trying to tell you. I tell you, when we do do this marriage seminar, it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> Satan was, listen now, Satan was separated from God, and Satan, Satan wants to separate husbands and wives. Ultimately, Satan does not want marriage to look anything like what God said it is. Let's take a look at this next one now. I didn't have it, but I feel this is the time. I want to show you um, kind of, when I saw this image, I said, yeah, man, this is what I'm talking about, about what marriage is. I told you before, and, and I liked it. I could, I could bring my husband down here right now, and he would know why I like this. Don't you know why I like this husband? Hmm? Nothing. Oh, I know what I should have brought. All those ladders. Now you know what I'm saying? What? Yeah, yeah. Come here, Dan. Come here. Come here. Come here, husband. Why do I like this? He'll see it now. He has to. If not, we're heading for divorce court right here. <laughs> what, you, what, what you like about? I just, I, huh? Trinity. What about your Trinity? Huh? Awesome, tough. No, you, 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 you're not trying to be deep with me. Who are you trying to fool? You ought to sit right down. <laughs> well, let me tell you about it. In 90, from 1983, yep, 1983, I've got probably 200 ladders at home. Yes, still got them. And in those ladders, I think both of us will always have this triangle, Peter, Maria, and God. Am I right about it? What you said? <laughs> Somebody got a lawyer. Huh? The, my eyes are telling the story? My eyes are telling the story, okay. Am I telling the story right in my eyes? Say that louder. I guess so. Okay. I'm got, am I got a lawyer on retainer? <laughs> yes. Because let me tell you. I'm going to say this. It's fun. I'm, I'm always been deep. So he, he liked me. Oh, she got brown eyes and pretty long hair. I, well, I liked the fact he, he was a handsome guy, but that weren't it for me. I knew a few handsome people. So my thing was I needed to know which one knew God. That's why he went out. I saw God, and God said, that's the one that's going to stay with me. What? Huh? 
get it. No, it's, it's, it's not the only reason, but you know, I don't want to tell him how I like your cleft and your chin and your dimple. I, I, I don't want to go there. I was trying to stay kind of spiritual and deep. You know, but um, yeah, those were some things that I, yes, yes. However, yes, Jana Maria, my middle daughter, yes, I liked his hair. But those physical attributes could be had by other people. And there was one distinction what would it profit a man if he could gain the whole wide world than to lose his own? Yeah. <laughs> Seek ye first the king. That was the song. He sang Matthew 6.33. That's my favorite scripture. And then he exhibited it. And I thought that he was the best reflection of God on the earth that I could trust myself to. And that's why I married him. So along with the physical attributes, it was this right here. Because there was going to be, watch it now, <clears throat> watch it now. <laughs> when, look at this, when it's God's agape, whew, the bride and the groom during holy matrimony, they get married, and the conjugal or the intimate sexual love is only a reflection, or not only, I should just say is, because it's an only, it is a reflection of God's agape love. When you love your spouse with the love of the Lord, with God's love, that's a different type of intimate relationship right there. That's one of the reasons why God says, hey, listen, make sure the person that you love loves me. Be because of this baptism thing right here. You have to be, what are you being baptized into? Right? This is, it's a wedlock. You're locked. You're locked in it when you get in it. Mind you, some people have found out how to unlock it, but you're, wed, you're wedlock. Right? Well, this is hurly wedlock. Some stuff's unhurly. Hurly wedlock. You're locked in it. God's a gap love. Listen to this. Philos is love in the form of friendship. It's what I feel for you and others. When the flame of eros, that's the erotic, no longer is able to shine, it's philos that keeps couples together. Let me explain something there. Agape is total love, the love that devours those that experience it. I think that's a quote I picked up somebody because I didn't talk like devours that right there. So what they're saying is this. We want to operate in agape love because it covers every love. Because, like, say you're both 100. Let me say 100. I better say 100. You're both 100 years old. You ought not be jumping off the rafters and, 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 and having all types of sexual in at a hundred. I know, hey, nothing. Hey, hey, nothing. You be breaking bones. Hey, hey. Yeah, you show me a couple that a hundred are doing that. Show me them. Anyway, making my point. When that, when that has died down, the other part of God's agape love kicks in all the more. That's my friend. A lot of people have sex, but no companionship. Come on, y'all. A, a lot of people who divorce, listen, they're not divorcing because the sex was bad. As a matter of fact, some divorced people have rendezvous, and, and they get together to have, uh, don't do it. They get together to have sex. <laughs> but they ain't going to be married. But the sex was always good. But that's not marriage. Marriage is more than sex. Marriage is totality, the totality of God's agape love. See why the enemy don't want people in church to learn about this? Because that's what I fought for, God's agape. And so I continued. This is why 3,000 years later, since the Garden of Eden, Satan has perfected destroying the godly union and now is focused on making the union ungodly. Satan makes the union now ungodly. So the original picture, you, you've seen it. That's the picture of God's agape love institution of marriage. Anything short of this falls short of God's consent and God's desire. Anything short of this is simply against God. If it's not what God said, then it, it can't be of God. You can't force it to be of God. Now, what I want to spend time, spend the remaining time doing, 
is looking to see how we in the Christian world have meandered into the gray area of marriage. All right? And always remember, as your shepherd, I have to teach this straight down the line. Okay? Understanding that things can go wrong, all that type of stuff. But I got teachers straight down the line. Now, Genesis 1:27, 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, you know how can we talk about them? God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heaven and over every living being that moves on the earth. You wonder why the earth's going crazy? <laughs> Fires all in California. Alaska had a hotter temperature last week or earlier this week than places like New York. Because we have come against this commandment of the first couple. You can't subdue the earth when you have stepped outside of this. So let, let's take a look here. God said, man and woman, this is what I joined together. And this is what I want to multiply. What I join together, you are able to multiply. What I join together, this is what I want to multiply. God said that when I put two together, you can produce more of you. This is what we've come to in the 21st century. Look at this rebellion. Show it to them. Huh? How those two got together to bring forth their, their children? Never happened. You gotta, they could not walk down the aisle, get married, have sexual intercourse, and bring forth and multiply. Impossible. Somebody else has to be involved in that. All right? Next picture. Now you know. But, but I, 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 I get a kick out of this. Just to justify this abomination, they will bring the black and white together. <laughs> he could have never done that before, but they need him. That's like they had to use that, that, that boy come from Canada to try to get this nonsense here in Bermuda. They had to use him. He ain't never been so accepted by white people in his life. You see? You see? Please, please, please. Truth is true. Next one. How they bringing forth, how they getting married, joining, the body parts joining, being fitly joined. Is there God talking about being fitly joined, the body? How are they fitting and joining? You, you can't buy stuff and make stuff fit. You're still going to be missing what you need for procreation. That cannot get together. God does not bless that mess. That's not, what he, that's not his holy institution. But that's why they wanted so much, you know. Next one, last one. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I, I'm right. How are they getting together? But, but look at the enemy. Remember I said it's got to come across smooth, right? You know, we are the world. We are the children. All one, right? Oh, we just love. You know, everybody's loving. You're out of your mind. Black males are still being shot by police. Hey, no, that's, that's to get to a certain purpose, destination. There's two cannot get together to produce any child. This is not what God blessed. He didn't bless this. This cannot join and multiply. Those two together cannot join and multiply. Let me just put a little warning. We have to be careful about this swinging things are happening in Bermuda and all these switching partners. But that's not what I saw. That's a part of the abomination, too, because the more that you weaken marriage at all, you give more credence to the enemy saying, see, what's so special? They're cheating on each other. See? There are plenty of things that are sin. Here it is. There are plenty of things that are sin and sinful and make a person happy. You do know that. There's a lot of things that are sin and sinful, and they make people happy, y'all. I see a lot of happy sinners. Sometimes I see the happy sinners are more happy than the church people. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> Not this person. But. Hmm? but listen here. Just know that if it, this is the key, if it displeases God, your happiness will not inherit heaven. 
I don't care how many legislation, I don't care if the Pope says it's okay, I don't care if the Roman Catholic Church in, in, endorses it, I don't care what the Anglican method, I don't care what the AME and the neutrality, I don't care. I said, if God is displeased... For a copy of this sermon in its entirety, please visit our church website at www.swim-international.com.